Hello everybody, um, my name is Owen. I'm one of the youth leaders um, for the Forge and um, today I'm going to take you through Psalm 15, uh, pick out a few things that I've picked out and hopefully spark a few uh, thoughts of your own. Before I do that though, I'd like to ask the question, um, who would you let into your house and live there? What kind of person? And you could pause the video now for a minute while you do that, or you can continue. So I'm going to read through Psalm 15. Um, I'm reading from the SV Study Bible. Um, if you haven't got an ASV, it doesn't really matter. Um, just uh, follow it in whatever version you've got. The words will be slightly different, but the meaning will be the same. So, Psalm 15. Who shall dwell in your holy hill? A Psalm of David. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does, not, does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbour, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honours those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. So, um, David, this is a psalm of David, and David starts off by posing two questions um, to the Lord and to God. Um, he asked, who shall sojourn in your tent, or who should dwell, who should be there? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? And um, here he speaks of the sanctuary where God is supposed to be specifically present. So um, back, back in David's time, they would have had the tabernacle where God was supposed to be present, be there. And only certain people were allowed to go in there. And so this was called the Holy of Holies, that you've probably heard of before. And then David answers with a checklist. So he starts off by saying, he walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks the truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue or does no evil with, to his neighbour, nor takes up reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised, etc. And at first glance, this checklist could be perceived as um, a list of things that we need to do to get into heaven, to be with the Father. And however, I don't think this is the case. As Christians, we know it's not what we do that sets us right with God, because we sin. Which is good, because we all sin, we will continue sinning. Um, and in, if that was the case, then we would never get close to God. It's only by grace of God that we can do this. So with God's grace, we can be, have that relationship with him. And we can draw near to him and we can dwell in his tent. So one might say, what is the point in Psalm 15? Then, um, If it's not about what we do, it's about what God has done, then why do I need to obey these things? that David describes here in the psalm. And, well, let's go into what David lists here then. So, verse 2, he walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks the truth in his heart. And this is quite a general term. Um, however, the rest of them are a bit more specific. So, verse 3, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbour? or takes up a reproach against his friend, reproach being a disapproval of their friend's actions, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honours those who fear the Lord, and so on. David here describes things which are not to do with the laws that uh, Moses gave to, what God gave to Moses, so the Ten Commandments and for that. These were all describing aspects of character, conduct, values, integrity, 
and a lot of use of money, how we how we treat others with money. So it's all about how we should treat one another. In essence, their quest the question here, though, is because I am saved through grace, should I go on and sin, continue sinning? Can I purposefully go on and go on sinning? And the short answer to that is no. This is not to say that we won't sin. Uh, I don't think that's what the point is. Because as John says, I'll read, I'm going to read um, a verse from the, from the letter of John. So 1 John, verses 5 to 7. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim, proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So, so the point is that we are saved by grace alone. And then, by being saved by grace, we should strive for righteousness and walk in the light. And David gives us specific points on which we can do this. So these are all about how we should treat God and how we should treat each other as well. So Jesus sums this up, though, perfectly in his two commandments he gives. So you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And you should love your neighbour as yourself. So as Christians, we are called to be like Christ, to strive to be like Christ, and work towards being like him. So my point is that... These, these things, although we are saved by grace, and then we do these things, these are things that we should strive to do. And I was hoping that we could all think about in our week to come and how we can do this, um, especially when we're still in isolation. But I hope that um, sums up this uh, passage quite well. Um, and um, if you've got any questions about this, can get in touch um, or post below. I think there's be a post below. Um, we're happy to answer any of the questions. But um, let's just finish by praying. Father God, thank you for grace. And I thank you that we can have that relationship with you, despite all the things that we do wrong. That it's by grace that we are saved and not by what we do. Help us to recognise that, Lord, and going forward, help us to, um, to seek what is right and what is righteous. Help us to walk in your light, to have that special relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a good week, guys.